I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system and I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. You can watch this video in its full quality without YouTube compression on my Patreon. Link in the description. First, let's start with the CPU performance. And throughout my testing, I haven't noticed any areas that are significantly CPU intensive. In fact, this game is so much better optimized than the first one, it's a night and day difference. I remember being bottlenecked at around 40 FPS in the first game. And here, the same CPU can get well over 60 FPS. But considering the amount of NPCs in this area, it's a very good sign so far. This means most users with lower end CPUs can still get a locked 60 FPS easily. The game looks to load level specific shaders at each loading screen but it does seem to still have some minor traversal stutter when entering specific areas. Although it was very infrequent, otherwise the game ran just fine. Now let's get into the settings, starting with upscaling. When stationary, all upscalers do a decent job, with minor differences, except for DLSS which appears to be over sharpened when compared to the other upscalers and it retains a bit more detail. However, a major visual issue I noticed with DLSS specifically is that it suffers from very noticeable and irritating shimmering or noise on some surfaces, which is a first in my experience. The other upscalers don't exhibit the same issue, at least not to the same severity. It was immediately apparent as soon as I started the game. Also, all upscalers except for FSR 3.1 have a hard time dealing with some elements, such as this small waterfall. Otherwise, all upscalers are somewhat comparable. Overall, DLSS looks to have major visual downsides. This makes XESS and FSR 3.1 actually viable in this game. The dynamic objects level of detail setting has a minor impact to objects, as in the many scenes I tested, only a handful of objects, if any, were affected. Depending on the scene, very high can slightly decrease FPS, therefore I recommend high. The character's level of detail setting has a significant performance impact, especially on the GPU, and in areas with lots of NPCs, the performance impact of the higher options can definitely be felt. Therefore, I recommend medium for the best balance. The environment's level of detail setting makes a major improvement on the medium and high options, and the improvement with very high is the least noticeable. And depending on the scene, the very high setting can have a very large FPS impact. Even high can have a measurable impact. Therefore, I recommend medium for the best balance. The dynamic object's texture quality setting affects very few objects, one of which I have found through my testing is weapons, and only when going from medium to high does it seem to improve texture resolution. The character's texture quality setting makes the most difference to the main player character's textures. The other NPCs are barely affected with this setting. It's the same story with the environment's texture quality. Only when going from medium to high does it start improving textures. Yeah. 
and the visual effects texture quality also only improves when going from medium to high and it doesn't seem to have any measurable impact to VRAM usage from my testing perhaps because these elements are rarely used on screen the texture filtering is straightforward and basic with each option higher making a noticeable improvement just use 16x for the best image quality the spotlight's shadow resolution make a decent improvement to the overall image quality and player lighting and shading up to high performance remains around the same while very high has a more measurable impact to performance therefore I recommend high. The point light's shadow resolution setting gradually improves their quality and accuracy with each option. High has a small impact to FPS, while very high has a larger impact. I recommend medium here. The ambient shadows are subtle in this game and their impact depends on the scene especially when there are a lot of characters on screen as it affects the ambient shadows on their clothes making them look more detailed medium and high perform the same while very high further lowers performance I recommend high for this setting For the directional shadow resolution setting, only when going to very high does it stop the shimmering shadows, but it costs a lot of performance, even high has a noticeable performance impact, therefore I recommend medium for the best balance. The directional shadow distance setting does as its name suggests and most areas see a big improvement when going to high as for very high i still didn't manage to find a scene where it makes a noticeable improvement so i recommend high for the best balance the screen space shadows quality setting makes gradual improvements to shading with each option and performance remains around the same except for very high which slightly lowers performance which is why I recommend high for this setting For the dynamic screen space shadows setting, I tested many scenes, in cutscenes and gameplay, and I still haven't found a scene where it makes any difference in either image quality or performance. Maybe the setting is broken, or I'm not looking in the right area. The contact shadow quality setting has a subtle impact to image quality, specifically on characters, and performance seems to not be affected so keep this one maxed out the image based lighting setting makes the most drastic impact to the overall image quality especially on reflective surfaces even though it can cost a couple of fps depending on the area this is a vital setting so keep it turned on bounced lighting mainly affects flashlights and the effect is not that drastic but it is there it can cost a few frames, so I recommend disabling it. The impact of ambient occlusion in this game is not what one would expect, as most of the lighting and shading in this game are pre-baked. Therefore, this setting has a very subtle impact to the environment. Luckily, Performance remains relatively the same on both the performance and quality options, so use quality for slightly better image quality. For SSR quality, going from off to low makes a large improvement, 
while high only has a minor improvement and it looks to use slightly higher resolution reflections but as the FPS cost is minimal keep it on high The SSR accuracy setting makes a noticeable difference at no measurable performance cost. Keep it on high. The SSR distance setting has a clear improvement when going from low to medium, while the improvement on high is very subtle. But as performance doesn't decrease, stick with high. The real-time reflections quality setting only affects some specific elements. The only one I found in my testing so far are mirrors, in which it makes a gradual improvement with each option. The very high option costs a lot of FPS, so the high option is the better choice for the best balance. I tested many scenes and I still couldn't find an area where the real-time cloud shadow reflection setting made any difference to image quality or performance. It's possibly broken and doesn't work, as in the first game, it affected bodies of water just like I'm showing here. Screen space subsurface scattering is very important to have enabled as without it, characters can look rough and ugly. It even has an effect on NPCs. Performance depends on the scene, but even though it costs a few frames at worst, it's a must-use setting. There are very few surfaces in which the refraction quality setting can have an impact. The high option increases the resolution and quality of the surface, while very high can completely change the look of the surface. As the performance impact is negligible, keep it on very high. Depth of field can be enabled in cutscenes only or during gameplay as well, and it has a major impact to cutscenes. And even during gameplay, there are different scenarios where it is used. It does have an impact to performance, but I still recommend enabling it. The depth of field quality setting is self-explanatory, and thankfully, performance doesn't seem to drop on the very high option, so it's my recommended option. I tested many scenes and areas, but I still wasn't able to find any difference the particle density setting made in either image quality or performance. Maybe I'm just looking in the wrong areas, or it doesn't work. The volumetric effects quality setting makes a gradual and apparent improvement to volumetrics with each option. Generally, low and medium perform similarly, but in some scenes, medium can sometimes perform much better than low for some odd but good reason, while high has slightly less FPS than medium and very high has a larger FPS drop. I recommend medium for the best balance. And here are the optimized settings. I would like to thank Chirpy for being a platinum member on Patreon, and you can support me directly too by becoming a member. In return, you will get to watch my optimization guide videos in full quality without compression, and have your name in them as well. You will also get to download my two custom overlays that you see in my videos. Now for the performance. Right where you start the game was one of the most demanding areas I noticed, so I thought it was a good place to benchmark. Using max settings at native 1440p DLAA, the game can sometimes drop below 30 FPS on average. Using the optimized settings still at native 1440p, increased frame rates significantly, but it is still not reaching 60 FPS. Right now it's hovering around 40 to 50 FPS, and switching to DLSS quality finally allows us to stay above 60 FPS most of the time. One thing I noticed about the game's performance 
is that it varies a lot. For example, in some scenes, the performance difference between max settings and optimized settings can be quite large. But if you reach a certain area, the frame rate difference shrinks a lot. So the game's scalability is not consistent. Overall, The Last of Us Part 2's optimization is miles better than Part 1, but that isn't really saying much, as the first one ran like crap. I would rate Part 2 as an average port. What do you guys think?